Bob, we were just talking to Eric. He was talking a lot about what they need to do to NCAA tournament and all that. How, how much do you talk to players about what's out there, what what, what they've got to achieve? Uh, I would say a significant amount of time. I mean, I I don't want them to to come in to us later and say, "I wish you would have told us." If you would have told us, we would have. You know, played harder, been more cognizant of what was in store, whatever. So, what are you telling this team now? We got to win. You look at Saturday. If you look at bracketology, I don't know whether that's one of the things you pay attention to. You guys are the first four in. They're the first four out. I mean, it's going to kind of teeter that way the rest of the year. How do you – I mean, so basically it comes down to must wins, right? Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, it's going to be that way the rest of the way out. We need a win. I mean, there's no sense, there's no sense lying to them. We need a win. Talking to Stevenson, he thinks 18 is a, a, a good, comfortable number. I mean, it's, well. Well, being the expert that he is, I don't know why you would ever <laughs> even think about doubting him. Well, yeah. But, I mean, that, that's – if you look at it, um, the last time you guys were in this situation in 2012, you got in with 18 wins in the Big East um, and were an 11 seed. I mean, that seems to be a reasonable number. You would think so. You would you would you would think that eighteen would would get us in and that we're playing in the hardest league in the country. And we played pretty well in the in the non conference, but who knows? I mean to your point, the number three team in the ACC I see is an eleven seed right now. And you beat them by twenty five on the road. Mm-hmm. No, our our non-conference wins are very good. UAB's playing well. I mean, you you can you go right down through the list. I think our not we've we played much better in the non-conference. We we beat Auburn. I mean, you look at our non-conference wins; they're probably better than our any than our conference wins. Florida, what, middle of the pack, SEC. Uh, well, they just had a big win over Tennessee. They just beat Tennessee a couple of days ago. Tennessee was what two in the country, yeah. and we didn't just beat them; we significantly beat them. So yeah, I mean we've got great non-conference ones. We've just stubbed our toe in the conference. If you go into a season and say. Okay, we're probably going to finish with 17, 18 quad one games. Or maybe it's more, maybe it's a little less. I mean, do you even try to look at that stuff heading into a season, or do you just kind of study it as the season, you know, has taken place? Well, you try to make an, a, an intelligent decision of who you play. Right. You, you don't. You want to play people who are going to be quad one games, particularly in the non-conference. But you don't want to fill up an entire, you know, thirty-one game schedule. With I don't think you can. Right. I don't. I don't think that's 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 almost not possible anymore. It'll give you awards for playing the toughest schedule, and the fans never seem to understand the type of schedules you play anyway, right? One of these days, explain to me what they do understand. <laughs> now on the post-game radio show um, after TCU, it sounded like you were uh, unhappy with the leadership of some of your guys. I guess, how do you think they've responded since you got back Wednesday morning or whenever it was? Mm. 
I, I, I think there were a lot of uh, a lot of heart to heart conversations. They didn't come to play. They know they didn't come to play. Um, we were we were bad. We 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 had very little enthusiasm. It was it was a. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it was, you, you go in, there was nobody in there, and then all of a sudden there were, you know, 4,000 students in there. Um, we just didn't, we just didn't step up and, and, and meet the challenge. I mean, the truth of the matter is they didn't play very well early either, you know, and then they, they, they started making some shots and they played better, and we didn't make any shots and we played worse. About that at all the rest of the year? What, not making shots? No, the lack of energy, enthusiasm. <clears throat> I know you got more games at home down the stretch than, than on the road, but enthusiasm, I guess, could happen, or lack of enthusiasm could happen anywhere, I guess. Mm-hmm. Justin, I would, I would hope that they understand the position they put themselves in. Um, We've got enough veteran guys that uh, they they should understand. We've got enough guys that uh, have played in NCAA tournaments who uh, should be excited about playing in NCAA tournaments. We got enough guys who a year ago did not. That should be a tremendous motivating factor for them. Defense, TCU got a lot of buckets at the rim layups and such. Um, you think that's been a problem all year? Was that a one-game thing? What did you think of your defense, you know, not necessarily this week, but overall? We haven't been great defensively, but we were, we were, uh, we were horrible. We just didn't, we didn't make breaks on the ball. We, we, we didn't guard the ball. Uh, we put no pressure on the ball. We didn't offensive or, or defensive rebound the ball. It was a uh, very lackluster, I guess, to be kind. Um, very lackluster performance. They just weren't. They just didn't. They didn't seem to have a whole lot of enthusiasm about playing. And then you start out missing shots, and I think that makes it worse. Effort and energy level more noticeable on the defensive end than offense when you when you have problems with that. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, it it's it's more noticeable, yes. Um, but the other as is noticeable as well. Probably just doesn't stand out as much because the other team's scoring. Most of you have to make a second time around against Oklahoma. First game, both teams shot the ball very, very well. I don't know if it was maybe the kind of style of play you would have wanted, but uh, just, you know, what do you think having that game back here? Well, you hope, you hope that um, the building's enthusiastic. Hopefully that, you know, the – the fans show up, the students show up, and there's excitement in the building. Um, that helps considerably. Uh, you know, Justin, I don't, I don't know if they don't understand uh, the the position that they put themselves in now. I don't know that they will ever understand. Do you do anything different with Groves, the older big one? No. Just guard him. They've won seven in a row against you guys. So what's been a common threat in those seven wins? Pick out one. I can't remember back that far. I mean, it seems like when you watch them, they've played with great effort in the games. Maybe not always played perfectly, but seem to get 50-50 balls. And, I mean, is that is that accurate? I, I honestly don't remember um, seven of them. I 
mean, I think, you know, I mean, the one the one that to me vividly stands out is when J.C. just locked up Trey Young. Um, I don't, I don't, and and it's it's unusual for me not to, not to recall, pretty much what happens. But I've kind of, I guess, blocked it out. Anything else? Well, this is psychology. Sorry, but Oklahoma lost three in a row. And they smoke Alabama. Just kind of have a bad night at home off of that momentum. It's State, which is a rivalry. I get that, but do just kind of what you're talking about with energy and things like that. Is it just hard to keep your thumb on things as, as a coach or a staff or even like leadership players as to what you're going to get from a collection of 10, 12, 13 players from a day at a time or a week at a time? I don't like I don't I don't really have an answer. I wish I did. Um we we don't have a uh a strong leader. Uh, we have some guys who talk a lot, but um uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't call them strong leaders. We don't have we don't have guys like uh, like we used to have here, uh, like I had prior, who when things, you know, guys were going through the motions in practice, they'd stop practice, they'd get in here, and I mean, they'd rip some people's, you know, I mean, I've had guys to the point where they said, listen, man, you're going to get when you keep this up and a minute though we don't have that so along those lines talking to Willie Akers at your fish fry and he said he wished this team had a go-to guy a reliable go-to guy is that important is that still meaningful in today's game to have sure. that sure sure what sure it is um prob- probably uh, what you would want is somebody you can throw it close to and score because you know, jump shooters are not going to make jump shots all the time you should make layups but that being said you think about it this this team has missed an ungodly amount of one footers two footers how many how many balls have they thrown up there that roll around and off the rim? Um, we've missed an ungodly amount of free throws. Um, we just haven't finished anything. To 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 get it as close as we've gotten it to to be able to drive it at the goal and get it on the rim and then not finish. Uh, not offensive rebound it and finish after that. And sometimes we've done that and then missed that and then rebound it and, and throw it up again and miss another one. And I I don't I don't recall that happening. I keep saying, you know, I keep looking, I keep looking at the at the at the film, I keep saying, you know, do you have your hand behind the ball? You know, if you got your hand on the side and you throw it up there and it you got some spin on it, okay, maybe you understand maybe why it rolled around the rim and went out. Um, we do that some. But I think it's I think it's hard to miss when you have your if you have your hand behind the ball and you put it in that square, it's 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 pretty difficult to miss. But somehow we find ways to. Coaches, uh, coaches strive for consistency in their team. 
if anything consistent about this team is that it hasn't been consistent. I mean, day in and day out, almost, you don't know what you're really going to get out there. Uh, how do you approach that? I mean, uh, how do you get consistency out of an inconsistent group? You know, Bob, I've I, I've thought about that, and I and I I think about I think about the future. I think about okay, we have X amount of guys coming back, and then you have uh, portal guys, and then you have transfer guys, and then you have maybe some good freshmen. Like you know, our two freshmen are good; they're going to be really good players. Um, and if we have a chance to get a couple really good freshmen again we probably ought to take a couple really good freshmen but the, I guess the point is the mix that you have is not what used to be um, you know you, you bring in a guy you bring in a guy from the portal who may or may not fit in you, you, you bring a transfer in who may or may not fit in you, you bring in a couple freshmen you bring in you know, you bring back guys, and it's 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 a it's not a good mix, and and I don't I don't know I don't know what the solution is. I mean, you you say you get a guy out of the portal, you you want to think that at least you're you're getting a pretty good guy, or you wouldn't have fooled around with him. I think same thing with a transfer. Um, but that doesn't always work out that way. It would, it would seem that after 21 games, that would be developing. And yet, again, yet, I'm sure you have no idea what you're gonna, what's going to show up there tomorrow. Or can, well, you know, I, I don't. The, the thing we've been consistent in is our inconsistency. I mean, we, we consistently come out and make a couple shots and then don't make anymore. You know, we come out and, and, and shoot shots that look good. They, they go in and then all of a sudden you're banging them off the front of the rim. We can't get it over the rim. It's just we've been so terribly inconsistent in so many ways. There's been times when defensively we've been you know, pretty good. And then there's been times when we've been like we didn't even really want to be there. So I don't. We 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 don't have a leader. We really don't. A leader. I think so. I mean, I I know uh, we just don't have that. That 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 strong leadership, the 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 you know the guy who drags everybody in and says you know this BS got to stop man now. And we've got we got they're good guys. I mean we don't we don't have bad guys. I mean we got really good guys. They're 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 good people. They they um, I mean for the most part they they give you they give you some effort. Uh, maybe not quite as much as what you'd want, but we just don't have that. We don't have that that, that hard ass guy when we that we've had before. We've had guys that go, would go in the huddle, and I would never have to say a word. You know? I mean, that's got to that's got to come internally. I mean, it can't be the coach. Should, can't be the coaching that, that do that. I mean, it's got to come from within the locker room. Uh, you know, Bob. You know, I mean, you you've been around this a long time, like I have. I mean, it's you you have a tendency to turn off the same voice when you hear it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And so you need a new voice. You need a you need a a, a new strong voice that's not the same voice constantly. Along those lines, leadership, enthusiasm, not making shots, turnovers, defense, you still got a shot to get in the NCAAs, and I guess I'm looking for your opinion here, to, to go through everything, the, the obstacles that you guys have gone through throughout the season. If you guys 
get in, say it's a low seat or whatever, what's the benefit? I'd be surprised if we don't get in. Okay. But if it's a situation where, you know, 11 seed, 12 seed, you know, you get in, you know, maybe you only play one game. To have a to go through all the you know to go through all the stuff that, that this team's had to go through to you know to only to be in a position maybe to only play one game in the NCAA is it what, what would be the benefit of that I guess is what I'm looking for your opinion on I don't think that's going to happen okay. I mean I really don't honestly don't think that's going to happen I, I I think we're going to get in the NCAA tournament I think I think we'll win games in the NCAA tournament um how many I don't know, but I think we will win games. I think we will advance. Um, you know, you can look at it a couple of different ways. You know, you can look at it as it's a it's it's a new beginning. It's a second chance. It's a you know everybody everybody who who goes to the college. I mean, they want to play in the NCAA tournament. Hell, I want to play in the NCAA tournament. It's it's a uh, you know I know I know you know that when we went to Indianapolis I mean the enthusiasm that our guys had was we had great enthusiasm um, and we I guess we what we win one game one game and lost the second game but I don't. I don't have any doubt whatsoever, though, that that we can get in the NCAA tournament. Doesn't that sound funny, though, that the journey to get there probably is going to be more difficult than once you're that once you're in it? Doesn't that seem odd? Justin, just I mean, if you if you think about the opportunities that we had, we missed an ungodly amount of one two footers. We had we had a situation where we had three free throws. All we had to do is make two. We win. We made none. How many times did we go to the line, have two shot opportunities? And at best, go one for two. I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I don't. Some some people don't deal with pressure very well. And if you're unfortunate enough to put those guys, have those guys at the line, you know, I mean, we had three shots. I mean, I put the guy there. I put the guy there who's who's a. a Six-year player. Right. I mean, you would think. Um, and they were they were all short. They were online. They were all short. It's so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, how are you supposed to know what people think? You know, and then you, and then, then the Auburn game, and I mean, we played. I mean, we we played. We we've we've had a problem throwing the ball around. We throw the ball around at a alarming rate. That's got to get fixed, but I mean we've done virtually every every drill that I know of, and I've been doing this long enough. I know a lot of damn drills. <laughs> so. Kitty's ankle, worse feet. Hmm? Kitty's ankle better, same, worse. About the same. About the same. He he went he went yesterday and and. Uh, Actually, actually looked better yesterday than what he's looked. Anything else? Thanks, Coach. Okay.
Yep. Thanks, everyone.